Hey, I'd like to share with you this book that just came. I could hardly put it down. And uh, Live Not By Lies, Rod Dreher. Uh, this book is dealing with, he a lot of it is interviewing former people from the Soviet Union who retained their belief in God and, and liberty uh, while they were under communist rule. Dreher's book is about the, uh, basically the coming of a soft totalitarianism in our present world. And it's really poignant. The public will support or at least not oppose the coming soft totalitarianism, not because it fears the imposition of cruel punishments, but because it will be more or less satisfied by hedonistic comforts, he writes on page 10. It says here, uh, and this is interesting, is like almost a prophecy. The so-called social justice warriors, a.k.a. SJWs, who started out as liberals animated by an urgent compassion and by abandoning authentic liberalism and embracing an aggressive and punitive politics that resembles Bolshevism as the Soviet style of communism was first called. So he's saying that if you're a regular uh, liberal today, uh, very easily you might end up basically in this, in this soft totalitarian line. And we see some hints about that. Uh, he's got a ch section here that talks about uh, the soft totalitarianism, the things that characterize it. Very interesting. Loneliness and social atomization. Losing faith in hierarchies and institutions. The desire to transgress and destroy propaganda and the willingness to believe useful lies. These things are all things that characterize uh, our world today. Uh, a mania for ideology, a, si a society that values loyalty more than expertise and um, using ideological tests to weed out dissenters. Uh, this cancel culture and all this stuff, it's right here. It, he, he's, he's nailing it. By the way, this was written in uh, the spring of 2019 and published then in 2020, all before COVID and, and the things that we've seen in the last year. So really fascinating. Uh, this chapter uh, deals with religion, progressivism as a religion. And that is uh, something real important. Christians today must understand that fundamentally they aren't resisting a different politics, but rather what is effectively a rival religion. And I think this is a big problem for Christians today. We have had this view that, you know, uh, the government's there, it's kind of the neutral party, it protects the church from the state and any other encroachments. Uh, but that's not what's happening. What we really have today is really a scenario. If you look at the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, chapter 18 in particular, you see that the merchants, the government, everything is all kind of blended in at the end. And what I think we are seeing today is that the, the expectations we've had and, and many of us have grown up with an understanding, you know, that the government is there to protect uh, our, our liberties, although that's what's written in the Constitution and all that. That's not what we have today. What we really uh, really see that that there's a blending of this secular thing. It's basically secularism is a rival religion to the religion of the Bible. And so that's a very different paradigm to be having. Uh, they're not the neutral, uh, the neutral uh, mediator anymore between all these different things. Instead, they are a rival religion. We don't understand that. But when we do begin to understand that, we're going to see that th you can't... You can't have them uh, running the show and, and mediating between everything when they themselves are the rival. This paragraph on page 7 really kind of puts that in outline. To grasp the threat of totalitarianism, it's important to understand the difference between it and simple authoritarianism. Authoritarianism is what you have when the state monopolizes political control. That is mere dictatorship. Bad, certainly, but totalitarianism is much worse. According to Hannah Arndt, the foremost scholar of totalitarianism, a totalitarian society is one in which an ideology seeks to displace all prior traditions and institutions with the goal of bringing all aspects of society under control of that ideology. A totalitarian state is one that aspires to nothing less than defining and controlling reality. Truth is whatever the rulers decide it is. As Arndt has written, wherever totalitarianism has ruled, quote, it has begun to destroy the essence of man. As part of, a, a, as part of its quest to define reality, a totalitarian state seeks not just to control your actions, but also your thoughts and emotions. The ideal subject of a totalitarian state is someone who has learned to love Big Brother. And then on down the page, today's, today's totalitarianism demands allegiance to a set of progressive beliefs, many of which are incompatible with logic and certainly with Christianity. Dreher's uh, telling us that the church needs to regroup and, and be ready to, to maintain itself 
if, as we go into a case where we are more and more pressed down and suppressed by the culture around us. Uh, he talks about demoralization. On page 99, it says here, a person who lives only for his own comfort and survival and who is willing to live within a lie to protect that uh, is a demoralized person. And I think that's what we have a lot today. We are, if, if you're willing to go along with a lot of the big lies that, in uh, 2020 was certainly a year for big lies, and 2021 has, has got some big lies, I think, already rolling as well. Yeah, with that, you have to go along with what they say about diseases, about politics, uh, about what sex is and isn't, and you know what a man is and what a woman is. There's a lot of lies there we are expected to live with today. Are we a demoralized people? Listen to this from page 122. The formal institutions of Czech life, this is Czechoslovakia, the formal institutions of Czech life, universities first among them, could no longer be trusted to tell the truth and to transmit the cultural memories that told Czechs who they were. But the task had to be done or the Czech people would disappear. So anyway, they started these small groups. They got together in their own homes and maintained uh, their faith and their culture. But that sounds a lot like today, doesn't it? Are we, would you trust the universities to transmit to your children uh, your faith or, uh, or what America is even about at this point? I think we have, our institutions are pretty much in that space, just like this one is. Over here on page, um, on page 116 and around about this section, he talks about how the collective memory is a big deal. Uh, in our memory today where the statues being toppled and uh, the 1619 project and all these sort of re rewriting of what our historical background is. Those are things that would change who we are and, and what we are. And then like in, uh, in Orwell's book, 1984, uh, you have the government rewriting history all the time. And so it, the history is just whatever you're told it is at the moment and everybody goes along with it. They all live the lie. And that's the way it was in the Soviet Union during communism. And so that's what we have here is a concern about our cultural memory. Uh, do we, are our, our memories being changed right now by uh, the way our people are being taught all over the place? And the collective memory of what is and what isn't is shifting. So on page 181, he recommends that we start forming uh, small groups now uh, to maintain uh, our, our religious structures and our community structures. The longer we remain isolated in a period of liberty, the harder it will, it will be to find one another in a time of persecution. And that makes a lot of sense to me. Social disintegration is happening, and if we are not careful, we're going to wind up with, uh, remember how we were surprised about a year ago with the COVID restrictions and all that, and suddenly, boom, we were practically locked down. Uh, we'd never seen that ever in our lives before. America had never seen that ever in its existence. But suddenly, boom, there it was. We weren't ready. So now that we have a, a space to get ready, we need to be getting ready at this time. Would your church survive if it was locked down for a year? Or if with the government told you when you could and couldn't meet? Uh, would, your, would your group survive, especially if the government is representing a secular religion that's hostile to you? Something to think about. There's a story here near the end about, uh, and it's a grisly story, but it, I don't think a lot of people know about this stuff. This is a story from the Soviet Union and a fellow that was in prison, and I won't read, tell you the whole story, but I'm just going to go ahead and give you the uh, uh, story he got from a guard. This guard kept kept listening to one of these uh, religious prisoners, and uh, finally he told him his story. Here's his story. Now, this is pretty pretty graphic. When I was a young guard in a different prison, they would gather 20 or 30 priests who had been behind bars and took them outside. They rigged them up to a sled so that they were pulling the sled. They had them pull the sled out into the forest. They made them run all day until they brought them to a swamp. And then they put them into two rows, one behind the other. I was one of the guards who stood in the perimeter around the prisoners. One of the KGB guys walked up to the first priest. He asked him very calmly and quietly, is there a God? The priest said, yes. They shot him in the forehead in such a way that his brains covered the priest standing behind him. He calmly loaded his pistol, went to the next priest, and asked, does God exist? Yes, he exists. The KGB man shot this priest in the same way. We didn't blindfold them. They saw everything that was about to happen to them. And th this whole group of priests were all killed Every one of them stood their ground and said, yes, God exists. And they were killed right there in the snow. This is something none of us are familiar with, maybe in a bad movie. But this was reality. 
could this kind of thing actually come here? I'll tell you what, I agree. The last thing I want to share is from uh, a statement he has on page 204. The faith of martyrs and confessors like those who survived to bear witness is a far cry from the therapeutic religion of the middle class suburbs, the sermonizing of politicized congregations of the left and of the right, and the health and wealth message of prosperity gospel churches. These and other feeble forms of the faith will be quickly burned away in the face of the slightest persecution. And then a quote from this one of these persecuted pastors, those who sincerely believe in God and those who just as sincerely believe that they believe, that's the division, he says, you can tell them apart by their actions in decisive moments. This, uh, this book is must reading today and uh, for Christians, we need to wake up. Um, I hope that isn't as bad as we see here. And yet, when I heard uh, Brother Conrad Vine's sermons, he talked about a soft totalitarianism being followed rather shortly by a hard totalitarianism. I am of the opinion that that is what we're to expect. So, brothers and sisters, now is the time to get a little bit serious. By the way, a little background on Dreher. Uh, I believe he was a Catholic and he converted to the uh, to Orthodox, Greek Orthodox or something like that. But anyway, and he does use a lot of Catholic uh, examples of people because that was what was behind the the uh, the Iron Curtain there. A lot of a lot of Catholic and Orthodox people were resisting um, communism. But uh, even though I wouldn't normally seek out those kind of examples, there are some awesome examples of people who, with all the light they had, were faithful in the most extreme situations, and probably some that would uh, were far ahead of where many of us would be. May God help us, uh, and thank thank Him for providing uh, thoughtful material like "Live Not by Lies" by Rod Dreher. You want to get it.